I'm going to tell you a story, and like so many of the best stories, this one begins a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Well, almost exactly 1.3 billion light years away, there were two black holes caught in a fatalistic dance. And as they spiraled in towards one another, they released ripples in the fabric of space-time. In the final moments before they merged, they released a ripple so large that we could observe it here on Earth over a billion years later. These so-called gravitational waves were predicted by Einstein a hundred years ago and detected here on Earth in September last year and announced just last month. Their discovery brings to a close a hundred years of exquisite tests of general relativity. You've seen a number of these images and you may remember a number of images you've seen of astronomical objects through time. The reason that we see these images is because our primary tool for astronomy until now has been light. But gravitational waves change everything. They are a game changer. And instead of showing you another image, the way that we observed these waves was they caused slight vibrations in our, in our experiment, which we can translate into sound. So here is the sound of two black holes merging. It's spectacular and it makes me smile every time. The story may lead you to belie believe that science is about certainty, knowledge, proving ourselves right over and over again. You would be forgiven this belief, for when we learn the history of science, we only learn the path of success. And we forget about the meandering road of doubt that leads there. And yet, it is that doubt, that questioning, that challenging, and that willingness to be wrong. In fact, that never-ending work to prove ourselves wrong that really underpins quality science and the scientific method. For when we try to prove ourselves right, so often we are led astray by the inherent confirmation bias within our humanity, the search for seeing things that we already believe to be true. Now, at this point in history, it feels almost impossible to imagine that gravitational waves could ever not have existed. And yet, a full 20 years after discovering them in his theory, Einstein was racked with doubt. He wrote a paper with Nathan Rosen in 1936, claiming that gravitational waves could not exist. Ultimately, science trumps personality, and the results, and the work was rejected. And so, in detecting gravitational waves now, and proving Einstein right in 1916, we are also proving that he was wrong in 1936. Do his doubts take away from the greatness of this discovery? No, I believe they're an intricate part of what made him a great scientist. Now, Einstein's general theory of relativity tells us how matter curves space-time and how gravity makes matter move along curves within space-time. But when it comes to matter, uh, general relativity tells us relatively little what kinds of matter the universe will allow or how that matter interacts with itself. You see, that's not quite true. You may remember all those beautiful posters that we put in high schools that tell you about the standard model. And we know a lot about these things. We know about electrons and we know about the quarks that make up protons. We know lots about photons, the elementary particles of light, and we know a fair amount now about neutrinos in all of the glory of oscillating flavors. And we know about the force-carrying bosons, and thanks to the spectacular discovery of the Higgs boson at the Large Hadron Collider a few years ago, we now even understand and have evidence for how those bosons get their mass. And yet, all the things making up planets and stars, people and cars, 
is less than 5% of everything there is. 95% of the universe is dark. And I mean that literally. It does not interact electromagnetically. We do not see it through light. And so instead we have to infer the effects of so-called dark matter and dark energy through the way they affect space-time and the objects around them. Now, my research is rather humble. I try to explain 95% of the universe. And a theory... A theory the theory that I am most known for, so-called chameleon gravity, might explain dark energy. This is the stuff that is causing the universe to expand ever faster with time, causing the observed accelerated expansion of the universe. And this theory proposes a new kind of force and particle that alters the way matter moves in a gravitational field, just slightly different to the way that Einstein would have predicted. But crucially, it is environmental dependent. So we need to be very creative to test the theory. And so we use quantum lasers, we use quantum lasers in the laboratory, and we are building a telescope to look at the sun for decay of these particles. There will be exquisite tests of gravity in space in the very near future. And finally, we use the spectacular astrophysical playground that is the night sky, cosmology, to try to rule out the theory, or perhaps to find out that the theory is perfectly explanatory. Now, beyond matter and gravity lie the deeper questions. This is where we stand at the very edge of the unknown, looking out into a sea of doubt and where we try to push out the bounds of knowledge. Most of the time we make small gains and yet when we are willing to take risks and risk being wrong, that is when we truly have a chance at changing the shape of the boundary. The questions that truly excite me are the ones we seldom ask about our universe. They are the hidden assumptions of cosmology that we all assume, and of course our data confirms. And yet, they fill me with doubt. Why do we experience three large spatial dimensions? Why are we stuck with time only moving forwards? Does the universe have a beginning? And if it does, how did it begin? How did we transition from the quantum to the classical? There is no theory that currently exists that answers these questions. I want to understand the global features of our universe that general relativity doesn't even dare to dictate. Understanding the geometry and the overall topology of our universe, we assume and we think that the universe is flat. All of our observations fit with that. And yet, it is the least likely possibility in all the marketplace of possible ideas. And so, if I do live in a very unlikely universe, I want to understand why. So my dream, my life's work, is to discover a theory that settles these doubts in a natural way. I know I've set for myself puzzles that may ultimately prove unknowable, and yet it is truly a privilege to try to solve them. So now, I want to be bold. And I want to claim that the next great discovery about our universe will happen within the African shores. Of course it will. Africa is co-hosting the Square Kilometre Array project, which will be thousands of telescopes with a total collecting area of a square kilometre. And it will give us unprecedented detail of the night sky. There is ample room for discovery. This project is a momentous opportunity for Africa. We will drive the technological and engineering advancements. We'll write the pipelines, gather the data, and analyze that data. And yet, I want us to go further. This should not be science in Africa. This needs to be African-driven science. And we need to be the next Einsteins too. This means inventing new theories, revolutionizing the way we think about our universe, and not only the way that we measure it. From Galileo to LIGO, 500 years of gravity and astronomy research has had its epicenter in the global north. It's time to shift the center of gravity. It is time for the sun to dawn on African astronomy. 
This is where we need to move past our doubts as a continent so that we are the ones to change the paradigms while driving the search for observational proof that we are wrong. For that is the scientific method. We succeed by failing to prove ourselves wrong. And so the space for doubt and curiosity is really at the heart of great discovery. And while Einstein doubted his greatest discoveries, it took several generations to prove that he was right. And so perhaps instead of us thinking that we see so far because we stand on the shoulders of giants, we should be thinking about how to lift up the next generation so that they can see further than we might even imagine possible.